Dr Charlie Verran may know this part of the world better than anyone. Spending more than 6,000 diving hours exploring reefs over 50 years. Considered the godfather of coral, he has discovered nearly a quarter of all coral species. At least a third, and it may be well over a half, of all marine species have some part of their life cycle in a coral reef. So, if there's no coral reef, you have uh, ecological collapse of the oceans. And my fear is that this is now in process. Welcome to my home. Uh, it's a complete, absolute mess, as you can see. Uh, uh, because we're moving, it's not always a mess like this. He's so this concerned is, uh, about the intensity of weather events, he's moving years. inland. And you describe yourself as a climate refugee? I'm definitely a climate re refugee, but um, who knows what the next 10 years will, will hold. And none of us want to move, but we feel we must. And we feel that we must ahead of the rush. At the National Research Agency Sea Simulator in Townsville, scientists can see how future conditions could impact the reef. So you can tell me a little bit about... Dr ocean Katerina Fabricius says as the oceans continue to warm and take in more carbon dioxide, the reef will fundamentally look different to what they do now. So these conditions here are equivalent to what we predict for the year 2100. So They're not looking very tests. healthy, are they? They're not very, looking very healthy, and that's our main problem. Ocean acidification is a real challenge for coral reefs. It is irreversible at time scales of thousands of years. And so that is the, our water from the Great Barrier Reef. It is becoming more acidic as we are sitting here. Mm. The minimum we've seen in 2011 is comparable to the maximum we, we would have seen in 1960. How does that make you feel? I want to shout it off the roofs because um, it is happening in front of people's eyes. High sea surface temperatures force corals to expel their algae, turning white and essentially starving themselves of energy. And they can stay bleached for months and then if the conditions go back to be fine, then they're more than happy to get the algae back. Successive bleaching back in 2016 and 17 severely damaged the reef. We did lose an estimated 50% of the live coral cover. I believe we have lost six species already completely extinct on the Great Barrier Reef. And I can't, you can never be sure of that. There has been some recovery. It's too early in, the, in, the, in time to see a recovery where you can say that's a nice coral reef. Forecasts from the Bureau of Meteorology show a low risk of coral bleaching this year, but it's too early to be certain. Are you travelling with us today? Yeah. yeah come on board. Seeing the largest reef system in the world is a draw card. We are headed to uh, the Great Barrier Reef. It is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. For the two million tourists who visit the Great Barrier Reef each year, 90% enter through either Cairns or the Whit Sundays. Well, it's about the most famous place, isn't it, for this kind of thing? Because it's important that the young generation can see it so they know how important it is to protect. It's not getting any better and only getting worse, so the sooner the better. This is just one reef on the 344,000 square kilometre Great Barrier Reef. And we're going to jump on in and take a look. Check the horizon and then take one big step. It is bustling down there. It's like a, another universe. We have been seeing in the last 12, 18 months a lot of baby little colonies growing back. Palo is a qualified master reef guide, a storyteller employed to improve tourists' understanding of the reef. And in two, three years' time, if the conditions are going to be the same, there's going to be a stunning garden of corals. It's going to be beautiful. Bottom line is the reef is not dying. There's some parts of the reef that are quite degraded, but then there's other parts of the reef that are absolutely magnificent. <laughs> 